what is going on guys this is a video that you're not going to want to skip this is brand new still FS 94R and the video isn't specifically about this weed eater it is how to set up your weed eater to make you more efficient in the field there's a couple of tips and tricks you're going to learn along the way while we set this one up for our business but a lot of this can apply to any brand anything you know it doesn't matter if it's a echo or husqvarna or whatever it's just how to set up your weed eater to make you efficient in the field and it saves your back and speeds you up and you know it's just so much that you can do to help yourselves out and a lot of guys do not realize this so let's get after it all right first off those are about worthless I've got a stack of these someplace. All right, before we get started, where'd my scale be? Yeah, I think you guys can see that. I don't think it's gonna weigh. So, see, it's bone stock. Doesn't even have fuel in it. It's got the head on it with the guard. Let's see if we can get this thing to weigh. I think it's going to be too heavy for my scale. Yeah, see, it airs out. Uh, airs. Because it weighs too much. The scale only goes to 11 pounds. So, let's make it lighter. That's what I like to do. whole thing while we're doing this. Handy dandy steel tool. Oop, let's flip it over. There we go. First thing you do, take off the guard. Now I know there's a lot of controversy about this. We don't run guards. And that's fine. If you want to run your guard, run your guard. But we don't run them. And I'll show you why here in just one second. Weight at the end of the day can make you or break you. And we're, you know, Laura and I aren't young ones. We're not young anymore. So a pound or half a pound at the end of the day can make a gigantic difference. Turn this bad boy on. Watch this, guys. See if you can see that. 8.9 ounces. Almost 9 ounces. Yep, 8.9. That's over a half a pound. Half a pound that you're not carrying around at the end of the day. That's why... She's gone. Okay, let's see if we can get it to scale. Let's see if we can get it to scale now. Ah. Oh, I screwed it up. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to scale. And I'm not touching it. Oh, she's about ready to fall over. 10 pounds, 13 and a half ounces. It's actually 10, 13.6. So there's our starting point. So it's two and a half ounces short of 11 pounds, right? Okay guys, 10, 13, so and a half. Let's start fixing this thing up telling you right now let's fix it there you go she'll sit right there let's rip this head off Oop, wrong way all 
The old auto cut 25 2. Right there. Uh, yep, the steel head. These are great heads. Um, we just prefer to run the Echoes because we've just been doing it for so many years. But that being said, hey, you run the head. You run the head that you want to run. There, it is right there. I knew I had it. But we're actually going to do a weight comparison here. Uh, I got to get the. There it goes. Oh shoot! Okay. But to compare apples to apples, we got to take the line out of this. Good. So we're going to compare compare apples to apples. We have to get rid of the line because that's not going to be part of the weight, right? And I actually do not know the answer on this, guys. I've not weighed them, so we're going to weigh them right now. Okay, so there's the 25-2, brand new. Let's open up the Echo. Echo. Get the line out of it too. Okay, well we got it torn apart. Let's go ahead and swap out our collet for the steel. Right there she is. Big hammer. Where's the big hammer? Big hammer. Wait, I gotta get my other tool here. That'll do it. Out with the old, in with the new. Let's just verify the green. I knew it was a green one. I just was making sure. Okay, let's put it back together. Okay, now remember, when you switch the steels, you have to have this little disc thingy. So we got to include that in the weight. Let's see if it saves us anything. I don't know. It's going to be close. Okay. 9 ounces. 9 ounces. Okay, let's see what the 25.2 is. 11.2 ounces. So you're saving 2.2 ounces by going to the Echo. 2.2 ounces. It's adding up, guys. Oh, wait, we forgot the backer. Shoot, we gotta reweight. Doggone it. 10.3 ounces versus 11.2. So, 9 tenths of an ounce, almost an ounce. Okay, one ounce, one ounce difference. telling you those ounces are gonna add up so we did 8.9 off the guard another ounce we'll call it an ounce with the head so we're at nine point no we're at 10.1 ounces so far safe right good I guess why we got it here we might as well just put the new head on right Shaft, disc, head.
backer off. Okay, there we go. Okay, new speed feeds on. Let's go. Flip her around. Oh, that's not gonna work. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's see. We might just move the camera a little bit. There we go. Okay, this little thingy doohickey that we're never going to use. We don't run straps, guys. Why even leave it on there? It's gone. Take that sucker off. Oh. Here's the hard part. Just getting it spread out enough to get it off here. Ah, there we go, got it. Okay. Back to the scale. All right, let's weigh it up. One ounce, so we're at 10.2 pounds, or 10.2 ounces saved. 10.2. That goes in the junk pile. All right, here's the good part, guys. Now we're gonna set it up for a professional. This is how professional trims. There's a lot of guys going to argue with me, but hey, this is how we do it, okay? Let me get this over here where you can see it a little better. I want to make sure you guys see this part. It's hard to do this. Okay. Okay, we had to go get Laura's trimmer because I needed to take a measurement off here because i got to leave room for this mount block right here. You can see that, can't you? Yeah. So this mount block is for our uh, equipment defense racks. So right here. So anyways, I gotta take that measurement because I needed that. I couldn't remember what the distance is there. So let's just take a rough measurement. Okay. So now I know this one. Right there. I had to do that because I gotta leave room for the block to go in the equipment defender racks. Okay, here you go guys. Loosen this handle up. Slide the sucker back. Now I'm gonna have to take it off here because I gotta make sure it's straight. I turned it. Sure. I'll look down the shaft.
All right. So you want this handle as close to the trigger finger as you can get. And you're going, well, why do you want to do that, Doug? Well, I'm telling you right now, when you get to be proficient at trimming, when your hands are closer together, you don't have to move your upper body and you don't have to lean over as far. So it makes life easier in the long run. Matter of fact, uh, hand me that trimmer. No, no, no. Yeah, that one right there. Matter of fact, I actually, even though I leave the isolators on, on the stills, on my Echoes, I even run my handles closer because they don't have the isolator in the way. Look how close this one is, guys. Look how close I got that handle to my trigger. Run this handle as close as you can get it to your trigger figure within reason. I mean, you don't want it clear over here. That'd be too close. You wouldn't have any control. But this way, you move it back. We moved it back about two inches from the factory. And you don't have to bend over. It's it's quicker to response to your to your body movements and it just makes life so much easier. But you have to be proficient because if you're not, you're gonna cut the crap out of everything, you're gonna scalp. It, it it's much more sensitive. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So we got our head on, we got that move back, we got rid of the extra weight. Let's weigh this thing. 10, 13 and a half, right? Isn't that what we started out as? Without the guard. Ah. Ten, ten. So there you go. We got our lighting down. I can't remember the exact numbers. I'm gonna to have to go back to the video and, and read it where we where we were. I can't remember. But we got it as light as we got as light as possible. We can't do anything else. We saved oh crud, kick the phone. We saved uh, a little bit of weight with the head. We got rid of this thing. And the guard, man, the guard that saved us almost nine ounces. That adds up right there. So guys, that's how I set up a lead ear. It, it's, you ask anybody that's been doing it long enough that's a trimmer guy, and they'll tell you, move that handle back. It just saves you so much work. You're not having to move your body so much. And, it, and it's just it's just easier. It, and you're not bending over because the handle's so close. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your weed ear. I know right now everybody's grabbing their wrenches. They're going out and moving their handles. <laughs> so all right, hey, new equipment, right? We always got to, uh, Guess how many pulls it's gonna take. How many pulls? Two, keep, okay, he's saying two. I'm gonna say three. What's your guys' guess? Put them down in the comments, I'll give you a second. Don't be cheap. All right. You gotta prime it up, there's no fuel in it. There's none. Okay, choke on, let's go. One. Oh, two, she almost wanted. Three, no. Four.
you go, guys. We got her started. I'm gonna run it through a few, a few heat cycles. I like to do that on new motors. I'll run them till they get hot. I'll shut them down, let them cool completely for a couple hours, and then I'll fire it back up again. Get it hot, cool it down, get it hot, cool it down. I like doing that on new motors, so. And varying your RPM. Never keep it the same RPM. So uh, there's the brand new steel FS94 that's going on the trailer. And uh, hey, I showed you a little bit of weight savings, how to set it up for comfortable control. Hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you later, guys. Bye.